Generally, they use the tunnels made by another inhabitant of these wide plains, an ancient animal which in the early morning retires on the ground. is one of the descendants of a race of armor-plated creatures that have lived on Earth for millions of years with virtually no physiological changes. The armor from which their name comes protects them against enemies and allows them to make their way through the undergrowth. But it presents a distinct disadvantage during the hot hours in the plains. The leathery surface of its dark scales rapidly absorbs heat. When the sun comes out and temperatures rise, the armadillo's protective shields cause it to overheat, and it has to seek cover underground. And this curious survivor of former ages not only does this rapidly and efficiently, but what's more, digs its burrows at the base of the termite mounds that are scattered across the plains, an impressive adaptive strategy. These structures offer the armadillo two great advantages. On the one hand, they have a sophisticated ventilation system, and on the other hand, they are full of termites. The lodger thus has an air-conditioned room and a larder full of food. For our tortoise, the sun becomes increasingly unbearable. Its reptile physiology will help it to bear the heat, but she is disorientated in this dry, suffocating world. Finally, a breeze carries across the smell of water and indicates which way she should proceed. And slowly, patiently, she enters the lowlands where the water left behind after the rain still feeds the last patches of green on the plain. Swamps and low-lying areas still hold water until well into the dry season. The soil of the plains is thick clay, and this is the essential factor making such incredible biodiversity possible in a place where conditions are so harsh, because the clay prevents the water from draining away, and so pools form. For the animals of the plains, the flooded areas provide relief from the intense heat. While the burning sun paralyzes life on the grasslands, the fauna of the plains gathers here in search of food and water. During the day, thousands of birds come here to feed. Under the shallow waters of the flood area swim innumerable fish. As the dry season advances, the patches of water become increasingly smaller and the fish progressively concentrate, making them easier to catch. And so the pool is crowded with fishers. The American ibises search the cloudy waters for small fish. They move their extraordinarily specialized beaks from side to side until they find their prey, fish of between three and five centimeters in length. If they touch weeds, branches, or fish of other sizes, they calmly continue their search. But if the beak brushes up against one of the fish they are looking for, it'll clamp shut with amazing speed, trapping the victim in 25 thousandths of a second one of the fastest reactions of any vertebrate in the world. Scarlet ibises, spoonbills, ducks and egrets, American ibises, each one uses a different technique, hunts different prey, and has a different shaped tool, the beak. It is a mass gathering of specialists with jaws adapted to a specific type of prey and so reducing competition among species.
From up in the air, too, there is a beak that can skim the water in search of fish close to the surface. And that beak belongs to the Sisabil. The lower part of their beaks is longer and more robust than the upper part, and serves as a tactile guide as it skims across the surface. Like the ibises, the scissor bills are selective and only close their beaks if they touch a fish of the right size. Even so, it is a risky fishing technique because on occasions the obstacles they come across turn out to be spectacle kainans. The water masses of the Orinoco Basin are often covered in a blanket of bright green. Millions of water hyacinths colonize the pools, forming small floating forests. Below the water, the hyacinths form an intricate network, a tangled aquatic maze. Floating on the swollen shoot of its base leaves, the hyacinths spread out their roots until they join with those of neighboring plants, to such an extent that they completely cover the surface of the pools, preventing sunlight from penetrating into the water or gases being exchanged. This could be fatal for the aquatic fauna and flora, but the plains also have a powerful army of hyacinth eaters, which clear the surface of the water as they incessantly graze. Thousands of capybaras daily feed on the succulent leaves of the aquatic plants. These powerful rodents, the largest in the world, live an amphibious life between the warm, clear banks and this enormous vegetable soup where they find food, protection, and relief from the implacable sun. To be able to dominate this aquatic world, the capybaras have acquired important physiological adaptations over millions of years of evolution. These are their weapons with which to conquer the water, paws with webbed fingers to swim and dive, and eyes, ears, and nostrils placed at the top of the head so they can receive all the information from the surface when they are submerged. A great part of their success in colonizing the plains is due to their social behavior. The capybaras are very gregarious animals. The groups are normally composed of 30 individuals, but can be of up to 100, so social links which begin with the family from the moment they are born are vitally important and must be constantly reinforced. When it is time to reproduce, the capybaras go into the water. On land, they're more vulnerable, so when they are going to mate, the male follows the female into a shallow pool, and beneath the protection of the water, they copulate. which becomes increasingly intense as the morning advances, brings new dangers to the water. An anaconda approaches the capybara's pool. It is an adult over four meters in length, and its life is now not as aquatic as it was during the early stages when it fed on frogs and small fish. But when the heat becomes unbearable out on the plain, it returns to its former hunting grounds. It knows it is now strong enough to catch larger prey and silently moves its powerful rings until it is submerged in the water.
The group of capybaras senses the danger. The adults who have seen the reptile arrive keep a careful watch on it. Only the head of the anaconda is above the water, as it hopes to go unnoticed until one of the young comes close to its jaws. But this time, it has been discovered. The experienced parents raise the alarm, and the group swims off beneath the hyacinths. Without the surprise factor that the giant anaconda will have no chance of catching them.